to the final fence and it's still Frey Whelan dead and in the lead. It was a bit nerve wracking there turning in when he was still in front obviously and everyone started jumping and roaring. Yeah, I was excited now at this stage. Mason running up to the finish. This is a crowning win for Ricky Doyle and Dermot McLaughlin and Frey Whelan dead in. Mike's all in the boys sports Irish Grand National. I'm Ashton O'Reilly from Off The Ball and we're here at the Ferry House Racecourse as we look ahead to the Easter Festival. I'm going to be chatting with last year's Boyle Sports Irish Grand National winning jockey Ricky Doyle and trainer Dermot McLaughlin as they won in style on the 150 to 1 winner Freewheeling Dillon. So Ricky, this is where it all begins. You're hanging around here with all the rest of the horses in the race. What are the nerves like at this moment? Nerves are kind of gone now at this stage. You did your parade, you showed the horse the first fence. The lads down here checking girth, but a lot of lads won't even bother getting that done because they're trying to get into position. Um, there's 30 lads down here, 15 of them want to go where only three can fit, so you're wrestling for your position before the race even starts. Just the way you mentioned, he's not the, the biggest horse. He isn't looking at him no. here. He's only about 16-1, um, as I said, uh, but he, he's, he's strong, you know what I mean? And he's athletic, That's, he's a great step to him. He's very athletic and a well-balanced horse. You know, you have bigger horses maybe with a bigger stride and that, but can carry more weight. But no, he's just nice now, he's a nice horse. So it's a case that everybody is trying to fight for that three or four positions up the top, because I suppose that's the safest place to be. Yeah, exactly. Um, like that. The first fence is nearly the most important that if you go down and miss it, you're shuffled back a long way. So you want the horse to have a clear run at it to give him every chance of getting the perfect jump for the perfect start. So you like you could have 25 abreast on all charging down to, to the first. So like in my head, I wanted to be in the middle of that 25 that I had, I had options going down to it. And um, so yeah, as I said, the race really starts here. Once you get down to the start, you're, you're right in your race. Everybody wants to get a position where they're comfortable. And you know what I mean? And like, so, say my point of view, I could say to them, can you ride them toward the fort? But just 35 horses. So 10 other trainers can say, will you be toward the fort? So obviously you can't be. I'm bringing you back to last year's Boyle Sports Irish Grand National. You're on freewheeling, Dylan. What was he like at this moment here, at the, just before you start the race? Was he calm? For the first time ever after the parade, Cantrim to the start was the first time that I ever felt him tank with me. And what does that mean for people that mightn't understand it? He's raring to go really, do you know? He's, yeah. he's, ready, he's ready for road. It was a matter of seconds, of the flag was dropped and we were away. Coming in the second time, they're off in the Boyle Sports Irish Grand National. So Ricky, you're coming up to the first jump. Where are you at this point in the pack? I am upsides in front. Um, like that, it was my first ride in the race, so the main thing everyone was talking about was the speed to go over the first three fences is the fastest you're ever going to go over any fence, uh, any first fence anyway. So that's all I had in my head was keep going forward, that the rest will come with me, like, and going down to the first and upsides in front, I had another horse on my outside, I actually think he took off just a second before me and landed over the first and like that I was thinking everyone's coming keep going and keep the speed up down to the second and it was only kind of halfway to the second I was kind of thinking where's everybody <laughs> first ditch fence number two as they go away from the second and it is freewheeling Dylan onto the third. So you were sort of wondering where are they as in, I, I, how am I leading here? Like you were almost a little bit surprised. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, I thought that there'd be more competition for the lead really. The horse enjoys being out in front and his ability to jump is unreal that it's the best place for him that he's not getting caught up in behind horses or anything like that. He's able to use all his springs to do what he does like but he really enjoyed it, like he just leaped over them. Yeah, yeah, he got in a, he got in a super rhythm very quickly and like that for 
a long time. They didn't even feel like we were riding in the Grand National. <laughs> so you as a jockey can feel that from the horse. I even, as you're coming up to the, the Ballyac corner here, you can feel that the horse is going well, there's a good rhythm. Yeah, like that, he's attacking every fence, you know, he's, he's eyeing them up and he's fixing himself and he's charging at them, you know, and kind of just sitting against them and just trying to be as quiet as I can and let him do what he does, like. And going into this race, you were telling me that he didn't really have nerves because he said there was nothing really to lose, 150 to 1, you know, the, the Irish Grand National, you'll go out and just see how you go. But at this point, you're leading. So what's going through your mind then? I rode the horse before, I knew that he was a good spin to get. Um, and at this stage, we're after jumping maybe the fourth or the fifth, and he's still, he's still taking me along. So now it's time to, now it's time to, okay, ride a race now. We are where we want to be. Try to get him to save as, no, as much energy as possible. He's actually doing the opposite. He's absolutely tanking with me, and I'm thinking, maybe this isn't going to plan. You have to have the brains to realise, right, we're going far too fast here. None of us are going to get home. We're all going to get tired of Bally Hack or whatever and pull up. So, you know, you judge your pace is vital as well. So, like, there's a lot, of, a lot of elements to it, you know what I mean? You're trying to get a good start. Then you're making sure you're not going too quick. Then you're making sure they're not, you know, you can give your horse a breed or certain stages. And obviously that he's jumping well. First half dozen, then Atlantic Shore and Robin De Carlo and Scormar. Court. These would be the exact size of the, the Irish Grand National jumps. These are the exact fences that they be jumping on today, mm -hmm. yeah. They're big enough. <laughs> yeah, they're, yeah, they're, they're actually a nice fence now. Um, yeah. I suppose the old lads would say they're not what they used to be, but they still take jumping anyway. Freewheeling Dylan, he was very comfortable that day. He was really leaping over the jumps, you know, he was enjoying himself. Yeah, the ground was good on the day and that's key to him and like that, he never missed a beat on the day, like he was making ground at every single fence. Is out wide and then Brahma ball, and opposites attract as they come to the fence on the turn into the straight. Freewheel and Dylan is leading a well punched up field. Ricky, we're here on the straight at the finish line. Great memories for you here, but I'm going to bring you back just to the fifth last. That's sort of the point of the race where so many horses are in contention at that point, but also you get a few horses pulling up. How were you feeling? at that moment. We're kind of gone beyond the two and a half, three miles now, and it'd be for a couple of horses, especially for the fancy ones, it's their first time gone beyond that distance. So you're kind of thinking who's still left in the race with, with that sense. And the, the fourth or fifth last there, you're turning, you're coming downhill, and that's when obviously a lot of things change too in the race, you know what I mean? Yeah. Different things, and you're watching out for probably loose horses, and who's like the fancy Tasha, you're watching him, how's he going, how's that going? There's so much going on, I'm sure, in the jockey's head as well. I'm jumping so well that I've, I've just saved so much energy everywhere that I feel like I've, 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 I've only gone two miles in a way, you know, I, that much horse underneath me. And that is crazy because you have led from start to finish at this point and anybody that has a bet on you is thinking to themselves, oh no, he, he won't have enough in his tank here. Well, that's when the squeeze is on. That's when, from the fifth to fourth last, that's when the pressure comes on any horse, you know what I mean? And uh, if he's not able to stay or he's not jumping well or he's getting tired, so that's when the weakness comes and that's when most of them, you know, aren't able to pack it up, you know? Uh, like Mam would say, or at least he, he, he won most of the race. <laughs> but um, yeah, the race was starting to pick up, you know. I was in front, so I was dictating the pace, so I knew free wheel and Dylan trip wasn't going to be an issue. So I started to just gradually build it up from then to try to catch the horses that have question marks over the distance. Fred close out up on the outside, followed by what latest what exhibition. Enjoy Dal and Discordly's been pulled up, Jerry's back's been pulled up, Dragon Destreval's been pulled up, Top Moon's been pulled up. He was winging fences, he was really enjoying himself, he was still on the bridle. He, Ricky seemed to have plenty of horse underneath him, so I was still obviously thinking, Jesus, we're going okay at this stage anyway. And yeah. once we turned the bottom, I said there's only going to be four more left, and we jumped that well, and we turned into the third last, and we're still in front. And, one of the lads said to me out of the yard, says, Jesus, we're going very well here. And when you come around this corner here, you've three left to jump. Turned in and like that, the horses were stacking up behind, which kind of drove my horse on, you know. Yeah. And went down to the third last and couldn't have met her on a better stride. Absolutely winged it, which meant that I didn't have to play my cards yet. So I could still just 
keep sitting and um, the second horse then came up to join me going down to the second last and we both we didn't have a, the perfect jump but I got away quicker and then it was time to go on then and try to win your race and I couldn't believe how much he actually quickened from the back of the second last down to the last and same thing you're going down to the last and you're just the safety is not what you're thinking you're thinking <laughs> get over this as just get over as, it yeah, and stay on the possible, horse yeah and knowing i having so much trust in the horse i suppose that i could see we weren't meeting it on a perfect stride so i just kind of put my hands down and kind of left it to him and he burst through the top of it and same thing again after the back of the last get after him again and see have we anything left and at this stage he picked up again and i could see that I was going away from the other horse and from there on in when I had a look up I was actually very surprised how close the winning line was that I was able to enjoy it then I could hear the commentary I could hear the roars you know I got to it wasn't the case of getting to the line and being unsure what was happening yeah I kind of got if I'd won it or not yeah I had 100 yards to really enjoy it before anything and coming down this last straight here getting over that final hurdle and you realize you've got over it safely you're still on the horse it's going well like what's that emotion like at that point it's just pure adrenaline like you have a, I suppose you have adrenaline throughout the race but it just picks up to another level again um, and like that you're just trying to just do whatever to get the horse home now and you cross the line what is that relief like that you have won the Boyle Sports Irish Grand National you win races and it's great and but for everything to go to plan like to get the ride I got in the race off the horse like if we finished fourth or fifth I would have been buzzing afterwards but the fact that we were after winning I actually couldn't believe it for a long time now when you get over the line there was unbelievable it's what you do it for you know it's why you're getting out of bed in the mornings a lot of work goes into these horses a lot of a lot of staff a lot of hours you'll have bad days and good days it was my first ride in the race I, I, I was around I'm around eight, nine years, you know, so to be waiting that long to even just get a ride in the race was, was hard, but it was all worth it in the end.